Welcome to 6D, part one, add in, subtract, and rational algebraic expressions. Uh, you're using the same concepts you did uh, with add in, subtract, and fractions like you did five, six years ago. Start off with a quick, quick easy example of something you did in the past. Two thirds plus five eighteenths. You can't add these, they're not like, they're not like bases yet. So you have to make them not like bases. Two is you either multiply both equations by each denominator, each other's denominator, or you can actually take, and if you notice, two thirds here, if you multiply the numerator and denominator by six, that will change the denominator to be similar, the same as 518. So now we have like denominators, so now you can just add numerators. 1718, and we're done. Um, for example one here, simplify it. We have two different denominators. We have a binomial, a plus four, and a monomial, three. They're not like yet, so what we have to do is you multiply, and most of the time, by multiplying one fraction by the other's denominator, and the other fraction by the other's denominator, It'll work out really well. So we have 3 times 5 is 15. We have 3 times a denominator, 3 times a binomial, so that's 3 times a is 3a, plus 3 times 4 is 12. On the second fraction, we have 6 times in parentheses a plus 4, so we have to distribute that in. 6a squared plus 24a on the numerator. The denominator becomes 3a multiplied in. Distribute. Now we have like denominators, so now we can look at our numerators and put them together. So put them together, we have 6a squared. I'm going to start with the biggest exponent first, plus 24a plus 15. That's all divided by 3a plus 12. Now sometimes you actually have to look at, can you simplify? So we look to see if we can simplify this now new fraction. So we look at the numerator, is there anything we can do to, can we factor it? And I can see between 6, 24, and 15, I can factor out a 3. What's left? We have 2a squared left on the side. By 24a by 3, you get 8a. And 15 by 3, you get 5. On the denominator, I see I can again factor out a 3. Then a plus 4 left. And right now, I, can, I see that I have 3 in the numerator, 3 in the denominator. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times what's remaining. It's just what's remaining, so we just say they cancel. We can look to see if we can factor the numerator even more. Maybe we can get an a plus 4. So you put it in the calculator, graph it, get your 0. I'll just check one of them for now. Enter, right bound, enter, enter. And I get negative point seven seven five two five five one. That's an irrational number. It's never doesn't repeat, doesn't end. So therefore the numerator cannot be factored further. And the final answer is two a squared plus eight a plus five all over a plus four. Moving on. Simplify it again. Uh, in this case, sometimes it might be beneficial if you factor right away. Uh, so I look at the problem and I can see that the denominator, first denominator, I can factor out the greatest common factor of 2x. So I'm going to rewrite the problem to factor out of 2x. That's x plus 3 left over and minus on the second problem, second. Fraction. You have 5 divided by 2x. Well, now 
I see both of my denominators have two x's in them. The only difference is, is one has an x plus 3 and the other does not. So what only thing you really have to do is multiply the second fraction by x plus 3 over x plus 3. This will give us like denominators. And if you didn't factor right away, you would not have seen this, most likely. So, multiplying that out, we have parentheses, which can carry this first fraction down. Subtract 5x plus 15. Distribute that 2x in. 2x, oh, actually you don't have to distribute it in. You can just leave it. It actually is beneficial for the next step. So we know we have like denominators. We have a 2x times x plus 3 and a 2x times x plus 3. So I'm going to bring that across. And in the numerator we have 5 subtracting all of this, 5x minus 15. So I have, if I distribute this negative in, I will have a negative 5x and then 5 minus 15 is negative 10. I now want to see if I can factor the numerator and I can see that I can take out a negative 5. Uh, let's see, if we take a negative 5 out, we have an x plus 2 left over. And then the denominator, we have x plus 3. Nothing in the numerator and denominator are like terms that we can cancel out, so here's your final answer. For the third example, we need to, um, again, factor, factor the numerators and denominators. In this case, only the denominators are factorable. So we look at the first factor, or first denominator of the first fraction. And you can put this into the calculator if you'd like and find the x-intercepts. But last unit we studied uh, factoring, and this is a perfect square binomial. So we can factor the denominator into subtraction in between, so it's x minus 4 and x plus 4. Only works, perfect square binomials only work when there's a subtraction in between the binomials or the terms. The second one, you can put that into the calculator if you'd like, which I did here. Put it into the calculator. There is a, a trick to this one. This, both first and last term are perfect squares, but let's check if I put it in the graph. Let's go to the table. We'll see that at negative 4, is there a 0? And it looked to be a double, so negative 4, so the factor is x plus 4. I'll write that twice because it's a double. Now, but now once we have everything factored, we look at our denominators, and they're very, very similar. The only thing that's different is I have an x plus 4, or x, 1 extra x plus 4 on the right fraction, and I have an x minus 4 on the left fraction. So what I'm going to end up doing, multiplying the first fraction by another x plus 4 over x plus 4. And I'll multiply the right fraction by x minus 4. I want the denominators looking exactly the same. By doing this, it will get our denominators the same. So multiply it in. The numerators always simplify the numerators. So x plus 4 plus 16. Denominators, I will I don't multiply those in. Leave those as factors. Plus distribute this three in. Three x minus twelve. Again, denominator. Don't don't actually multiply them out, just keep them as factors. Now we have like denominators, so let's combine our numerators. We have 4x plus 3x is 7x. We have 16 plus negative 12, which is positive 4, so plus 4. And the 
denominators, x plus 4. We have two of them, so you technically could do x plus 4 squared times x minus 4. I look to see now again if I can simplify or I mean factor the numerator. 7x plus 4, I cannot. So that is done, finalized. All right, so I wrote out down all the steps for us. Uh, first, factor all the numerators and denominators, if possible. Second, multiply to get like denominators. Third, add or subtract to get one fraction. Fourth, factor the numerator if possible. Fifth, simplify if possible. Uh, you do these five steps and you'll be on your way to success with 5D, part one. Thank you.